Welcome to the Q&Rs uh, for our nervous system lecture. So now we're going to start off by answering Lily from New York. And these are the censored versions. So there's some subjects that I can't really talk about. Um, the uncensored comments will be posted on our site. Uh, Lily in New York. My daughter has been diagnosed with major depression recently and started taking, um, started with medications, but she has mentioned to me that her neck hurts sometimes. What type of specialist should I look up to help her? Thanks. Okay. Um, when you're looking at depression, depression has to do with the frontal lobe, but it also has to do with gut health. And if someone's in a chronic state of pain, that puts them into a fight or flight state. And you figure We've got an automatic nervous system. One part keeps you alive under stress, and that's the sympathetic or fight or flight. Um, the other part is rest, digest, and repair. So she may have, um, and this is why we would recommend finding a corrective chiropractor as someone that's going to be taking a set of x-rays to document, and then we may see a leaky gut on there. If that's the case, then a diet change, you got to consider it's called the gut-brain connection, so that's going to be an issue. Knowing that the neck hurts, the, all the vertebrae have sensors that communicate to the cerebellum, and that cerebellum controls the frontal lobe. Frontal lobe is anxiety, stress, impulse control. It's everything. So look at the three stressors. Physical stress, that's going to be evident on the x-rays. And you could use our list of seven questions to find a corrective chiropractor because they've got to be able to shoot an x-ray do some therapies, you know, adjustments, and then shoot another x-ray and document that they're fixing the problem. Then healing the gut's going to be a huge, huge thing. And then also diaphragmatic breathing and then reprogramming the brain. I would recommend when you're going to the chiropractor to also look up emotional freedom technique, look up, look up neurolinguistic programming and a EMDR, my eye movement desensitiz uh, desensitization response. So so when you're looking at, at the different alternatives, finding the cause of the depression and anxiety is going to look at the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. And she will recover, but you got to identify the stressors. Now from Patty Schmidt 2680, can you reverse MS? Well, and this is, again, this is one of those controversial topics that you can't really talk about completely on our censored media. But if you look at the national <laughs> mssociety.org, okay, th th look at this. So multiple sclerosis, it just means many hardening. It means um, the, they suspect that the myelin sheath of the nerve, that the body somehow attacks it and breaks it down. And then with that myelin sheath um, gone, you don't have the same control over your body. Now, if you look at this, 85 to 90%, have remitting and relapsing. So what does that mean? Does that mean the myelin sheath was destroyed, then all of a sudden it gets rebuilt? No, look at, look at MS approaching it in a completely different fashion. Look at it has a brain issue. And then when you're looking at this, you've got to look at three different things, physical, chemical, and emotional stress. Because the brain functions in a whole different world. It burns 30% of the body's calories, 90% of the body's oxygen, it produces its own food called cerebral spinal fluid. Now, there's a lot of chemicals out there that can cross the barrier that the brain has set up, like the blood-brain barrier. And, and, or there can be a structural problem altering that flow of cerebral spinal fluid. So you've got, that's why you've got to look at the physical stru structures to make sure that the pelvis is stable so that rest, digest, and repair can regenerate the tissue. You've got to make sure looking at neurotransmitters or the gut health is going to be hugely important. This is why a lot of ketogenic diets tend to help MS because they're actually giving the brain the appropriate nutrients. Also, by stimulating that brain, you can actually regenerate it. Now, there can be some MRIs that will show placking in the brain. And again, this may be a censored topic, um, but you will actually see post-MRIs and scans to see that placking start to remove. Because typically, the theory is that loss of cerebral spinal fluid flow from possibly a mechanical distortion, um, then the body is going to form those plaques, not has pathology, but has an adaptive response to the stress state. So with 85 to 90% of individuals with MS demonstrating re remitting and relapsing, 
if you treat it like an adaptation to stress and you look for physical, chemical, and emotional stress and you deal with that, then the body has the best chance of regenerating itself. And, and you can, you can reverse it, but you've got to find the underlying causes of stress and correct those. Question three from MTA Shunk AB715. I'm having problems with my tongue going numb. I'm so scared I don't know what to do. When I was born, my dad is Irish. My mom full blooded Lakota. Great combination. Um, my dad didn't believe I was his and threw me into a wall. That's an asshole. I was two weeks old. I hurt my neck, and since I've always had problems with my neck. Buddy, we gotta get you, we gotta get you healthy. Okay, the nerves that supply the tongue come out of the top of the neck, okay? The base of the brain. So this could indicate pressure on the brain stem. So you have got to get to a corrective chiropractor like ASAP, okay, to, to check to see if there's pressure on that central nervous system and what has happened. And then to hold that in your heart that, that you've been abused since you were two weeks old, okay, that's going to be an emotional stressor. And so when you look at physical, chemical, and emotional stress, emotional stress is just like getting hit by a car along with the physical trauma that you experienced. And then having the emotional component on top is a big deal. So physical stress, the, luckily the tongue's going numb, so that's an alarm telling you that there's actually a problem. Identifying the physical stress, and I would look at the low back, the mid back, the neck, everything, because it's connected. Then I would look at gut function, because neurotransmitters are produced in the gut. And then I would look at neuro-linguistic um, programming or to reprogram that brain because all thoughts fall like dominoes. So every time you think about an, a trauma, that trauma can, can initiate like, like thoughts falling in a, in a domino pattern. So it can suck you into the pit of hell. So when you learn to recognize those patterns of thoughts, then you can actually reprogram it. And that, that's the most effective way because you got to figure a memory with an emotional charge can run your life. A memory without an emotional charge um, is wisdom. So, so you decharge the emotional component of that and then your psyche can start to recover as well. Um, you will get better, brother. Question four from Sela Pau, 8632. I need help with my AFib, atrial fibrillation. Okay, great. The heart has two nerve supplies. One is coming out of the base of the neck. So if there's any structural deviations, that's going to be one. That's the parasympathetic nerve supply. So getting x-rays to look at the structure of the neck and upper thoracic is going to be hugely important. I'd also recommend x-rays of the low back because if you have a deviation there, that could be putting the nerves that supply the heart in a stressful state. Then the upper thoracic, that's the sympathetic nerve supply because you've got an automatic nervous system. One part keeps you alive under stress and that's the sympathetic supply. That's located in the thoracic and lumbar area. The other is the parasympathetic, also called rest, digest, and repair. And that's located in the neck and the pelvis. So typically there's going to be an alteration in the autonomic function leading to the atrial fibrillation. It's not going to be a defect in the heart, even though that's where the doctors tend to focus their therapies. Looking at the autonomic function, then you're going to have the best clue to correcting the actual problem. Plus, you've got sensors in your neck at the junction of the carotids. You get the main red coming off, the big artery, and that splits, and you've got a chemoreceptor and a baroreceptor. And if carbon dioxide levels go up, then this increases the heart rate to get that carbon dioxide transfer out. When carbon dioxide levels go down, then the heart rate slows down. So you've got a lot of sensors in the neck that control heart rate and, and the, just the function of it. Um, you take the x-rays and you're going to find the cause. Find the doctor, use our seven questions to find a corrective chiropractor, and you've got the, the doc to correct it. Question five, regain, read to gain knowledge. Can tremors be reversed if they're not related to dementia? Okay, understand tremors um, and dementia are the body adapting to a toxic and deficient environment. Tremors are going to generate dopamine, and that has a calming effect. 
This is why like teenagers are bouncing their leg because they're in a stress state and they want to generate that dopamine that has a calming effect. If there's a tiger outside the door, you know, oh, there's a tiger, that shaking is going to create dopamine and have a calming effect on the system. So when you're talking tremors, you've got to look at the structure. Okay, so look at the neck, the mid-back, low back, because if you have an alteration in that communication of the brain, that's going to put the brain in a physical stress state. Chemical stress state, look at poor sleep patterns, look at toxic food. If your great-grandparents wouldn't recognize the label, <laughs> throw it away. And I mean a label on a hunk of corn, okay? You know, I mean, just just eat like normal food and, and you're going to be okay. But there's so many chemicals and endocrine disruptors, things that are like hormones that are in our food that are toxic. So look at the chemical stressors and then look at emotional stressors because emotional stress, chemical stress, and physical stress activate that fight or flight system and then that's also going to trigger that that response and knowing that neurotransmitters are produced in the gut i can almost guarantee you you're going to see a leaky gut or an abnormal gut function you fix those causes and you're going to see the tremors start to go away oh and then look at cross crawl mechanisms okay to regenerate the neurons in the brain neuroplasticity this is why exercise deep breathing and high fat diets are good for brain issues because this, the tremors, is absolutely a brain issue. I'm looking at the cause of the brain issue. Question six Wish I'd paid attention. <laughs> I love the name. Um, I seem to have an autonomic problem losing protein in the water, um, refused extra blood pressure, saved from going under with mega dose. B vitamin, magnesium, and potassium. Cannot walk far yet. Stamina good. What now? Okay, but perfect. I think if you're talking about losing protein in your urine, that means that the kidneys have been damaged, but luckily kidneys repair. Um, extra blood pressure, it means that the blood isn't efficient at doing its job or you're in a stressed state. Um, Save from going under with the megadose B1 and magnesium and potassium. Okay, so you supplement it with B vitamins. Those are generally produced in the gut. You've got a, a magnesium and potassium that you took in. If you're in a stressed state, you're producing less stomach acid, and that means there's going to be less absorption of the minerals. So that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Um, autonomic problem, I think you are in definitely a sympathetic dominant state or low-functioning parasympathetic state. Both are going to be in stress. So you've got that autonomic function. Sympathetic means fight or flight. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. You need the balance. So there's three things. Knowing that, that the kidneys are probably an issue, that means the blood is an issue. And the lungs are going to be an issue. And the liver is going to be an issue. So that also makes a lot of sense for the blood not being healthy. And this has a lot to do. When, and understand, every red blood cell is brand new three times a year. Every 120 days, you're getting a brand new red blood cells. So if you're not breaking down the proteins to amino acids, you're not going to get the raw materials to build healthy cells. So we've got to look at the physical stress. So look at x-rays of the entire body, pelvis, lumbar, thoracic, and cervical spine. Um, that's going to identify chronic long-term issues or, or acute issues. Okay, then... You've got to look at the blood. If you get a live blood cell analysis, that's going to really, really help. You're going to see because there's certain uh, medical interventions that can cause the blood cells to start to get sticky. Okay. And they, when you lose your electronegative charge, the cells, they start to overlap. Okay. And that's called, if they overlap and start to stack, it's called rouleau coin formation. You'll see it on a blood analysis, um, live blood cell. So, Know that this the low stomach acid could be leading to a lot of this, but what's the cause of the low stomach acid? The chronic fight or flight state. What's that cause of? Physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. But the not walking far, that means that the blood's not healthy. And just figure, I mean, if we're watching a scary movie, the blood becomes thick. Um, blood viscosity increases under stress. So you've got to look at the underlying stressors, physical, chemical, and emotional stress. This is why I like doing a, a full-body thermography, 
because we can see how the body's, you know, metabolic responses in the body. Looking at a live blood cell analysis shows us the health of the actual blood. And, and then <laughs> looking at the x-ray shows you the physical stressors. And, and your body will recover. You just got to build the healthy cells. Question seven from Kenai2744. Uh, Do low breath problems get fixed with core exercises? And if not, what can be done? Okay, when you're looking at low back, you've got it. One of the biggest things that's missed is the unstable pelvis, also knee, foot, and gait. So if you're looking at your feet and your big toe is leaning towards the other ones, that means that they've got compromised nerve supply. And every time you're walking, your gait's going to be off. So first, looking at the low back, but I mean lateral flexion x-rays. Bam, take an x-ray. Bend the other way, take an x-ray and a static x-ray. But looking at the gate, this is why in our pelvic health videos, we have a block of wood, it's a four by four, that we talk about stretching the calf. And then we talk about walking bare feet to work those intrinsic muscles. We talk about swinging the legs to get the knees working correctly. Because just doing core exercises, I mean, any kind of movement's gonna help. But if you're sitting a lot, like office worker, you're driving, um, look at our pelvic health video where we use, you know, fairly firm, non-compressible foam placed at the bottom of the elbows as the bottom of the roll, 20 minutes in, 10 minutes out, 20 minutes in, 10 minutes out, the whole time a person's sitting. And so assess the lumbar, the low back correctly. It could be an unstable pelvis. It could be an alteration of gait. And the core exercises are fine, but they're you know, it, it's not going to correct a disc or stabilize the pelvis or change the gait. Look at those other aspects and you're, you're going to find the solution. Now, if your question wasn't answered in this video, visit the drbvip.com site. I'm going to respond to as many questions as I can. I won't have um, the sensor um, there. There won't be a sensor there <laughs> because, well, we do have. Um, censorship on social media now and this is why it's some of the questions i have to answer in um, a, a guarded tone um, god bless you take care of yourself and stay healthy my friends and i'll see you on the dr b vip, VIP site if i haven't answered your questions